In one of my comments, somebody asked me to do a little bit of a detailed video on how I rig everything. So I'm going to do that. So starting out with right now, today at the moment here, with this clear water and the water temperatures where I am, it's going to be an egg fly, egg drift indicator game. So I'm going to show you how I set up for this. And then in another section here, I'll show you how I set up to run sink tips and so on. So I'm going to go over some detail here, how I set it up and run. Um, you're going to notice that this is a Raven float. And this is one of the, oh, this is a three grammer. And it makes them smaller ones. The three grams is about as big as I, I use. I use a, these Raven's floats for trip fishing because very often to get the fly down during the winter, get it slowed down, we got to run. Unfortunately, we got to run the curse of trip fishing split shot. And I want to be able to often get the fly down fast because I'm very impatient. I don't want to fish light and have a very gradual sustain because I got a short drift. I want to drive that fly down as fast as I can. I want to get it fishing as quick as I can. So as a result, sometimes we got to suspend the weight a little bit. So that's why I run these um, larger floats. The other thing with these larger floats is you can mend aggressively. You can slam your line right up to them. The floats can bounce a few inches. You're not going to knock your fly off track. So that's why I use it. Some people accuse me of center pinning with a fly rod. Well, so be it. It's winter and we got to adapt to the conditions. But the, these Raven floats really make it a little easier. Now this leader I have on here is one of my hand tied leaders. It's about 9-10 feet and above my cursed split shot I got my leader knot in about 36 inches to my fly. I'm going to change my fly. I don't want this fly for today. So this is probably about eight pound. I get away with eight pound fluorocarbon, sometimes six pound. I don't have any six with me today, so I'm running eight. I'm prepared. But this is one of my hand tied leaders. I do have a video in the technique to, um, section of the videos where I go through and tie in the, the leaders in detail. Now, because they're a knotted leader, and because I just don't want to mess around. In fact, I am going to mess around and do it the hard way. I'm going to change my fly. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just cut one of the knots out, string in the um, little plastic tubes that I use with this, which I will show, and then just tie a knot on. But since I'm going to um, have to readjust because the water's kind of low and it's down from where I fished the last time, I dropped that one. I'll go find it. I don't want the ducks to eat it. Uh, I'm going to have to readjust my whole, sh my whole shot level, so that means that the shot's coming off anyways. And I got a nuclear row bug. And um, in this water, what I want to fish is maybe like a carpet fly. I've been lately in the carpet fly kick for some reason. Why not? They catch me lots of fish. So here, I'll take them off there. I have it. I got, you can't really see it, but I'm self videoing. Is I got these little plastic tubes put it in my spare hand to float and I'll just string these things on so bear with me getting no geezer eyes and usually you can run one, one tube above one tube below I happen to have four so I'll go two up two below just giving an extra hold Oh, they are rubber, so if I'm careful, I can slide them over the knots. There we go. They're in place. I'll install my float. One of the other reasons why I like these floats so much is thingamabobbers and some of the other floats, even the um, can damage and kink up here, just make a mess out of your leader. It won't totally damage it or weaken it, but just make it look ugly. Get a lot of kinks and then you wonder how strong your leader is. So this kind of goes through there. The line goes along the edge. And what's nice is it's really easy to adjust. And when you're working under indicators, it doesn't matter if you're in the tributary streams or in a trout stream at Spring Creek. When you're using the indicators, being able to adjust quick and on the go is really, really useful. So we're going to come back. 
oops, gravity. And this tippet feels all right, but I'm gonna retie it anyways, or retie the knot. Get up here, now, my, there's a lot of different tippet knots you can use. Surgeon's knots, you can put a little swivel or a, here, or you can run a uh, leader ring. Whatever you like works good. I use a double uni. Um, I'm just used to it. It's less stuff that I have to carry. Uh, and I don't, I don't have to worry about, you know, sometimes these those little swivers, swivels and those leader rings can work really good. Uh, I just get a little lazy and just tie a double uni knot. You know, surgeon's knot, people says, what's the best knot? The knot that you're most comfortable with and tie the best is the best knot for you to use. However, our line testing and abuse testing showed that the double uni is probably the most durable we use. Now I got these little tags, I'll clean them off. Um, quick note, some people like to take the long tag, put a little knot on it, and then put your split shot on there. Uh, I used to do it, stopped. Now what I'm going to do is, we're about 36 inches, which is perfect. And get my fly out of my fly holder thing. And go back, same thing I did with old geezer eyes. Oh well. And I'll use my favorite little knot. Now this knot right here, I don't know what it's called. But there is a little knot video on there that shows me tying this and making sense out of it. It's some sort of dunking knot that's it's it's a really durable knot. Yeah, we're going with the carpet fly. Hey, I'm on the oak orchard. Might as well fish a carpet fly. Clean that up. Now what I'm going to do is a little fishing tip when you're having to use weight. I like to keep some stray shot in my pockets. Because I can go in there, grab a split shot or two, make a quick adjustment. You know, add on, take off, and I'll have to keep digging around in my bag and going to my container. And you know, I just have some loose shot in the pocket, so I can I can be a lot faster. So I'm going to start out with probably a little light, because I like to start a little light and then work up heavy until I just get it. And you're going to, you know, everybody's got that feel there. I like to just see the indicator. Um, adjust, you know, registering the bottom ever so slightly. So figure for depth, figure your depth plus 20%, 30%. It's a good, it's a good place to start. So I think this is a good starting point. We're probably running about four foot and I'll, I'll see how that works. And then I'll go from there. In fact, I know this pool well enough and I'm going to, in this flow, I know exactly what I got to run for weight. What happens if you spend too much time on a piece of water you can look at it and you, you can just tell so that's basically my niffing rig for for running like and i'll do the same setup for nymphs you know tributary nymph fishing tributary egg pattern in pools now if i'm fishing fast water rifts like in the fall we're chasing brown trout and we're sight fishing i don't run an indicator i and um, the other thing is your length of your from your shot to your fly Generally, I found 36 inches works. However, if you're fishing some creeks where it's really narrow, you may have to shorten it up. If you're fishing some big pools, you can get that split shot a little further away. I always like to keep the split shot when I'm using split shot as far away from the fly as I can. It does two things. One is the shot doesn't bother the fish. Two is you can get a much more natural drift, and that helps you get some really good eats and some good hookups. So that's my egg fishing indicator fishing general setup. Um, and this rod particularly here, um, I grabbed this one this morning. It happens to have a scanning line on it. Um, this time of year, I prefer to use gadgets, but the skein, this rod likes the scandy, and with this type of fishing, it's going to be just fine. Uh, please take a note that if you are running a skadget head, make sure you have a, um, a floating tip on it too, because your skadgets are always meant to be ran with some sort of tip. So put a floating tip on, and then it'll be the same thing. No different. Your favorite 9, 10 foot leader, about 3 feet of tippet use your favorite um, indicator and um, then just play with your weight and cover water all right that's my my niffing setup all right different day different river conditions different rod different rigging setup so what i'm going to do is take this rod right here i got a, in this case I have a skagit on it 
and I was doing some kind of flip it out here so I can get the line to work with. There we go. So it's a sketch I got a Skagit set up, of course, um, winter time with the capacitor reel. I am running a uh, model running line, so I can definitely change my Skagits to Scandies if I want. For the uh, dead drifting indicator setup, I was showing it on a Scandi. With this, I'm going to show how I set up a sink tip, and I'm going to be setting it up on a Skagit. Really, there's nothing different other than if you want to change from a Scandi to a Skagit, when you got these loop systems, these integrated. Um, uh, like a bunch of modular setups with lines so I can just basically use the same reel and I can put a Skagit on it, Scandi on it, or I can take the reel and put it on a different rod and just change the line system to match the rod so my reels are not locked into one rod. But in this case I was running a, um, this is a uh, floating sink tip on here and a long leader I was working some pockets, some shallower water I'm in a different river this afternoon and I want to swing. The water's up, it's dirty. Um, I'm hoping there's some new fish in and they're a little bit, maybe a little bit more active here. I want to cover some water because the water's up and I want to just be a little bit more efficient. So there's a lot of reasons why I might want to say make a change. And once again, with these switch rods and these integrated line systems, all I'm going to do is unloop my floating line. Kind of sometimes got to bear with me here for time concerns. And I leave I put a, a quick tip. Um, leave your leaders right on your, your lines. That way you don't have to go, you pull off a sink tip or a floating tip and gotta go digging around looking for a leader. Uh, you don't have to do that. You know, you got the leaders right on. It just saves a little bit of time when you're out on the river. And another quick little tip. Here's the back end of the floating tip. In this case it's a uh, Skagit floater or excuse me a mo tip floater and I'm just going to make a few loops through here around the um, leader and everything else and I end up with a nice little package. I put that in the right pocket. Normally I carry a little Ziploc bag in my shirt pocket. People that follow my YouTube channel I'm obsessed with Ziploc bags. They're cheap and they work. And then I'll pull out the um, desired uh, uh, sink tips. In this case, I'm working with a series of mo tips. Um, never mind this thing. Um, what it says on the package is not what's in the um, what's not in the bag. The tip is not in the right package bag. I try to keep putting all my sink tips back in the original package bags that come in, so I have an idea what they are. It doesn't always work that way, and over time you end up with this glorious massive nest of mystery tips that you're trying to figure out what the sink rate is and everything else on them. Once again, this is kind of coiled up. I do take a minute and just very care whoops, very carefully uncoil them because one of the laws of physics and fishing is is every fly line must tangle as it uncoils. Here we go. And this one I happen to have a, a leader on the end, which I'll go over in a minute. There we are, and make sure I get the right end. And it's as simple as just looping on. This is the nice thing about it is, you know, here again we're on the stream. And we want to completely change our setup a little bit. And it just takes a few minutes like you see in here. And I'm just kind of working around the knots. So now we got a nice little loop to loop. And our 10 foot sink tips on. This happens to be 10 foot of T8, which I'm gonna try here, see how it works. And then on the other end, there's another loop. And in this case, I got about what's gonna come up to about six feet of tippet. I run anywhere from four to six foot, no, excuse me, tippet at a liter. Four to six feet a liter, and maybe about that much tippet. But anyways, I do like to integrate them a little bit so I'll, a quick tip on leaders if you go on to my um, library you'll see I have a video on tying leaders and I tied a nine foot leader which starts with 40 and ends up with something like 12 or 15 
on the bottom and plus a tippet. What I do is I take those leaders, I cut the 30, 40 pound off the leader, put that back in the bag, use the bottom section from um, 25 on down is my sink tip leader. That integrated tapered leader, it's a lot of work. Everybody says it's not important, maybe not. I like how it turns over. I like how it lays the fly out a lot nicer, a lot neater. And often we could be casting around brush and if you just front tip it, it kind of turns over like a two by four. Where if you do that integrated, it kind of roll over and I can cast it under stuff and class it close to trees and just stay out of debris. Plus it looks pretty when it lays over. So that's why I go through the effort. But you can, you can get as lazy as put four foot of 12 pound on and go fish. Or you can take time and tie an integrated leader. In this case, it's like, you know, it's, it starts at 25 and goes down to, to 12 and then I'll add on maybe a 10 or I'll stay with a little extra longer chunk of 12 and use that when I'm swinging. Another tip is when I'm swinging, I do fish pretty heavy. Um, I do swing with 12 and 10 pound um, test um, tippets because very often that fish could come up, hit the fly and turn and you can get a big shock load and bust you off. So that's why I usually fish pretty heavy with, with, my, um, my, with my tippets when I'm swinging. Sometimes I'll come up, eat it, and go down. You get a really soft eat. Other times they could just be turning on the fly and you get a very hard eat. And I want to be prepared for the hard eat. And since the fly is coming tight off the, the tip, the leader, and the tippet anyways, your diamond or your tippet is not going to have an effect on how the fly swims. Now what I'm going to do is reach over here. I did get a, I was fishing this fly earlier. Kind of a neat little fly I'm going to put on. And at this point, this leader here has already got some tippet on the end. I was using it before. Like I said, I left the leader on. And what I'm going to do is just put this thing on and go cover some water. So it's, as for the knot, now I got a knot video in here too. And my fishing tips are you know, you can see how I tie my favorite knot, but and again, everybody says what's the best knot to use, whatever you tie the best. Whatever knot you're comfortable tying, you do a really good job of tying, that's the best knot for you to use. You can have a great knot, and if it's not tied properly, well, it's going to break off easy. And now we're going to irritate all the dentists. Use my teeth. Even though i got a pair of cutters right here. Bad habit. I need to break it. But anyways... That's my rigging for a sink tip. It's pretty simple. The other thing is, is everybody asks, well, what tip should I be using? In this case, I'll carry um, a little uh, bag load. I'll carry like T11 or T12, T11, T8, and then a couple poly liters, kind of like a seven second sink, a five second sink, and a three second sink. And they all fit in a little sandwich Ziploc bag and go in your shirt pocket, plus a floating tip. And you can you can cover an awful lot of different water conditions right there and obviously you can see how fast it took me to just change my setup very quickly so that's how I set up a sink tip setup on the stream and now let's go and make a few casts and see if something will chase it I'm gonna make a few casts see how it works a lot of times you got to cast it swing it see if you got the tip right all right well I tried to show this out on the stream but the sun glare was just tore the shot up and I wanted to show you a, uh, a few of the tips that I carry obviously here's the floating tip that I use off a of Skagit head I always carry a bag of um, leaders for obvious reasons and these are my normal 9 foot leaders 10 foot leaders that I use on the floating right here like I said when I go to the sink tips I just cut off the top third which is the 30 40 pound test of the leader that I tie. These leaders I tie myself. There is a video showing how I tie my leaders. And you know T17, T14, some heavy stuff, some T11. Somewhere someplace I also carry it, some T11. So I got basically three or four of the really aggressive sink tips carried. These are poly leaders, a little lighter. Um, I, the um, There's a three second sink and I think this is a seven second sink. Oh, it says medium. Uh, four second, but I'll carry like a seven second sink too with me. So I'll carry a few of these, a few of these. The whole idea is, you know, bright and they all fit in the shirt pocket, and I can just be adjustable right onto the stream. So when I go from when I want to run sink tips, I can just um, 
this is what I carry with me as a collection of that stuff. Obviously, that's not the total collection because it is missing a few tips here. Um, I got to get a little bit better organized. But those are the tips that I use. What you want to keep in mind when you get the tip for the right water flow, you often have to try it. Cast it out. See how it swings. If it's swinging kind of fat, if you think it's a little fast and a little high in the count, it most likely is. I want to be as close to the bottom as I can and as slow as I can without the tip making contact with the bottom. AK, I want a clean swing as deep and slow as I can get. So generally what I'm looking for is low and slow without it dragging, low and slow and clean. So when I find bottom, I like to just either line handling or maybe going to the next lighter tip, I'll kind of come off the bottom so I get a nice clean swing. You know, you're usually fishing within the um, 18 inches of the bottom, which is perfect. So, this is Jay at JPEC Guides in Lost River Fishing. We are a year round fly fishing catch and release guide service. We fish the Lake Ontario tributaries. And then during the spring and the summer, we also fish the inland trout streams, classic dry fly fishing. During the heat of the summer, we will do the warm water fishing for bass and pike. If you are interested in any of our islands or have any questions, please feel free to email us at fish at lostriversfishing.com. Hope to hear from you, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact us.